Argonne National Laboratory is well known for its development of nuclear reactors. CP5, a research reactor, the experimental breeder reactor, experimental boiling water reactor for the generation of electricity from nuclear energy, and many others. Reactors born of necessity in man's investigation of nuclear science have many beginnings. To maintain and develop research and engineering abilities, Argonne has for many years provided an educational program for its staff, personnel from industry, and other government agencies. The International School of Nuclear Science and Engineering, established at Argonne in conjunction with President Eisenhower's Adams for Peace program, was a logical extension of these training abilities. Experience taught us that certain types of nuclear equipment needed to be developed particularly a good low-power training reactor that would be suitable for nuclear research purposes. The Atomic Energy Commission chartered the design of such a reactor at Argonne National Laboratory. It was designated Argonaut. The first of these reactors designed and constructed at Argonne is employed for training and research. Objectives established in the design were to provide a good training reactor of low power to avoid the expensive complexities of the present high-power research reactors, yet one with a neutron flux high enough to be used for practical nuclear research studies. A most important consideration was that of safety. Built-in features were required to attain absolutely safe conditions for trainee operators. The core arrangement had to be flexible enough to permit the basic studies essential to the education of reactor engineers with access to each and every part of the reactor structure. The reactor is designed for easy erection in a 40 by 40 foot floor space. The control console is located in the same room as the reactor. Only the water circulation equipment in a utility pit is below floor level. The reactor active region consists of a graphite cube surrounding two aluminum tanks, one inside the other. The inner tank is filled with graphite serving as a reflector. The space between the two tanks is occupied by water, graphite, and fuel boxes. A variety of fuel arrangements within this annulus is possible. Flexible control rods seven inches wide are driven by a compact mechanism that operates like a roller window shade in reverse. They can be rolled up slowly and automatically unrolled fast to shut the reactor down. There are six such rods in the external reflector. An external graphite column has 15 stringers, removable for the insertion of samples, apparatus, or to obtain beams of thermal neutrons. Beam holes for higher fluxes and neutron energies are also available. On the opposite side of the reactor, a cave extending to the face of the graphite reflector can be used for a large variety of experiments, such as exponential tests. This cave receives a portable tank provided for experiments with liquid media and is exceptionally useful for basic shielding studies. Of course, the tank can be drained for other uses. A driving mechanism for running an antimony beryllium source under the reactor introduces neutrons to initiate startup procedures. Equipment to handle the natural water used as moderator and coolant is conventional. An ion exchange system is used to purify makeup water. Nitrogen injection is one of the safety systems. Gas bubbles can be used to replace water between the fuel plates just as steam bubbles do in a boiling reactor. This reduces the nuclear reaction rate and provides for rapid shutdown as a safety measure. A small pump circulates water through the reactor at a rate of about three gallons a minute. The large pipe is a dump line to return water to the 275 gallon storage tank. 
Fast removal of the water moderator is another feature of the safety system. A heat exchanger is provided for cooling the reactor water and a heater for warming it if temperature effects are to be studied. The shielding over the core has ports permitting access to fuel elements and sample channels. Removal of this cover provides access to the entire core and the opportunity to mount experimental apparatus in the region of high flux above the reactor. The graphite internal reflector has five channels in which samples may be irradiated, or the graphite may be removed to provide a very excellent facility for exponential experiments within the reactor. The Argonaut is a water moderated reactor of low power, but can be operated intermittently at 10 kilowatts and derives its nuclear energy from aluminum clad uranium fuel elements. The uranium is in the form of oxide enriched to 20% U-235. The fuel plates are bolted together to make a 17-plate assembly. This arrangement allows each plate to be replaced easily. Twenty-four cells for fuel boxes are provided for in the annulus of the core. In this particular core arrangement, twelve such spaces contain fuel. The balance is filled with spacers made of graphite coated with aluminum paint. These additional fuel cells permit the experimental testing of various core arrangements. This loading of 190 plates contains 3.6 kilograms of uranium. Within the central reflector, a neutron flux of 10 to the 11th is available at an operating power of 10 kilowatts. Neutron migration experiments can be performed on the top of the system. For these purposes, approximately 10 to the 7th thermal neutrons per square centimeter per second can be furnished at the bottom of the exponential assembly. The five-foot square central region of the reactor is covered by a steel-jacketed concrete slab one foot thick. The concrete is the high-density type weighing 250 pounds per cubic foot. This is the only place in the Argonaut where high-density concrete is used. The remainder of the shielding around the reactor consists of ordinary concrete blocks. At this time, the balance of the top shielding is not in place. Preparations for some of the extensive applications of Argonaut in the investigation of nuclear systems and components are made prior to startup. An irradiation hole of the external thermal column is being employed for the calibration of BF3 neutron counters. Students from Pakistan, making a basic shielding survey, arrange gold foils in the shielding tank. The measurement of induced radioactivity in these foils will enable them to plot the attenuation of neutrons by water. At the central thermal column, a sensitive region for pile oscillation measurements and danger coefficient studies, students from France attending the International School of Nuclear Science and Engineering load a magnesium sample in a non-destructive test for impurities. The reactivity change caused by the presence of this sample when compared to that caused by magnesium of identical weight and known composition will provide an indication of the purity of the sample. Multiple interlocks guard against the accidental removal of shield plugs when the reactor is operating.
These contact switches are backed up by a photoelectric alarm that prevents access to the top of the operating reactor. Personnel in the reactor room are protected by several radiation monitors. If tripped, any of these safety devices will shut the reactor down. Personnel alerted, all experimental apparatus certified to be in order, the reactor can be operated. First, a check of all conditions is made. For ease of operation, all essential controls are brought to one master selector switch. First, the antimony beryllium source is run in. Visual plus audible signals keep all personnel in the building informed when the reactor is operating. As each condition is satisfied, it is indicated by the lights around the selector switch. Only then can the operator proceed to the next step. The neutron flux level indicator is started to record the rise to operating level. With each of three safety rods withdrawn in its turn, the dump valve, normally open when the reactor is shut down, is closed. Next, water is pumped into the reactor. As an additional safety device, the rate at which the reactor can be brought to power is limited. Everything happens slowly. It takes a total of 25 minutes to bring the reactor to criticality. The shim rod completely withdrawn, the coarse control rod is next. As startup proceeds, the neutron level is automatically and continuously monitored. Any one of four safety circuits can shut the reactor down and scale changes are necessary as startup continues. As the fine control rod is withdrawn, the multiplication gradually increases. The exponential rise on the chart indicates that criticality has been reached. Argonaut has a dynamic range of power from milliwatts to kilowatts for test purposes. The desired reactor power is established by adjusting the fine control rod position. Operating level reached, the thermal column provides a convenient source of neutrons for calibrating boron-coated ionization chambers for one of the laboratory's critical facilities. At the console, control rod design calculations are verified experimentally by the rod drop technique. Rod worth being proportional to the instantaneous decrease in power caused by the rod drop. Neutrons from one of the horizontal holes are sorted according to velocity by students from Brazil using Enrico Fermi's original neutron chopper. In addition to the automatic safety devices, the operator can manually terminate reactor operation. Scramming brings all shutdown mechanisms into play, dropping in rods, dumping water moderator, and introducing nitrogen for complete shutdown. The addition of Argonaut to Argonne National Laboratory's family of nuclear reactors further extends the opportunities to teach reactor technology and provides research facilities in this field safely and economically. <laughs>